Hey yo, it's Lil Boo up in the house. Gotta provide y'all with some crazy rapping, bought some crazy musicals. All right, let's get started. In the words of my G, Ursula Le Guin, you cannot buy the revolution. You cannot make the revolution. You can only be the revolution. It is in your spirit or it is nowhere. So while we're speaking of revolution, let's take a look at Hamilton and Hairspray because these musicals got a whole lot of revolution that they portray. All right, all right, all right, here we go. First, let's take a look at Hamilton, a musical that is literally written at the American Revolution. It shows us the disagreements, the tensions between those who want independence and those who like the British presence. The colonies have been mistreated for too long. They wanted autonomy, the chance to control their destiny. They wanted freedom from the injustice that dictated their lives. They didn't want a power imbalance, they wanted rights. So the only solution was to start a revolution, and in the countrywide revolution there was a smaller revolution of racial inclusion. This musical gives us the Rond, Hamilton's buddy, who was the nation's very first black battalion. Because you can't have freedom and justice for a country without freedom and justice for all of its citizens. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Hamilton and his crew fought the war. They didn't stop for demotions or deaths nor failures or romance. Why? Because they believed in their country's right to independence. God bless. But after winning, there was still more. There was economical depression, slavery, inequality, social issues galore. The revolution wasn't over, but instead of fighting with guns and swords, it was time to fight with laws, papers, and words. Hamilton worked like he was running out of time. Essay after essay, line after line, the Federalist Papers, the National Bank, the centralized government, it was getting pretty swank. This was a different kind of revolution, a governmental redistribution that he led because of how much he believed in his country and the values he fought to achieve. Yeah, yeah. So through rap battles, elections, characters, and connections, Hamilton shows us how revolutions can happen from the bottom up, from the top down, because what he did at the forefront of the country is the foundation for what the USA is now. And speaking of today, there's some parallels we can make. Just like America, countries around the world are fighting for independence. Ukraine is still working to detach itself from Russia. Russia. Catalan just recently got their sovereignty. But the idea of revolution isn't limited to state autonomy. We have the Black Lives Matter movement, the Me Too movement, the fight for abortion rights. These are all revolutions that could have the same trajectory as the revolution in Hamilton. The same tensions and imbalances are there. The same injustices. It's not fair. War hasn't broken out yet, but the people are upset, working like they're running out of time to roll vote against the control inside. Ain't that nice? Now, just in case you're struggling to lose track, allow me to run it back. Hamilton didn't just show us Hamilton's story. It showed us the complexities that individuals and the country went through, the injustices, the fight for independence and for equality and all the emotions, the struggles that are present in Hamilton, they're present throughout our world too. But let's take a step back from the storyline and look at the musical design. Hamilton is part of a movement, an artistic and musical movement, or I guess you could say revolution, to increase diversity. So the main characters are always played by people of color to represent another's culture and to make the musical more applicable to modern day people. Additionally, it employs genres of music that are originated from racialized communities. Hip hop, R&B, soul, they all got big roles. Essentially, this musical is about revolutions within revolutions, and it's part of revolutions that aim to create solutions for injustice and inequality. So I guess you could say this musical is pretty revolutionary. Now, let's take a look at our second musical, Hairspray, in which revolution is beautifully portrayed. First and foremost, let's talk about the revolution against racism that Tracy Turnblad evoked, because in this musical, she's a catalyst for change. Remember, at this point in history, it was the early 1960s when segregation was very much present, but so was the civil rights movement. Many communities were becoming integrated and eliminating segregation. Now, in Tracy's case, she is a force of equality and grace throughout the entire story. She learned black dancing styles, always spoke up for equality, and took bigger actions, like setting up a march against sensation and minimized black participation. She also won a beauty pageant and used her winning status to, to declare the show integrated. Everyone was persuaded. She was one single girl, but she ignited a revolution, and the people in her world stood up for her vision. 
With the special thing about Hairspray, they did it a certain way, where Tracy is endlessly optimistic and innocent. Throughout the revolution, the musical takes a very heavy issue and weaves it right into the story of a girl getting on a dance show. The racism is in no way hidden in a metaphor or any fancy lyrics they said. It's included in perfect clarity throughout the whole piece. The musical advocates for racial equality through preppy songs and teenage dreams. So it's mad relatable and easily interpretable. Now we've got another revolution that Tracy was the center of. It's the body positivity movement. Self-acceptance and self-love. In the 60s, the most popular body shape was ultra slim, no curves, no wig. And Hershey went against it. In that time, Tracy was on a larger side, and this was a fact made known several times by other characters in the show. Despite this though, she didn't doubt her beauty, and she still succeeded. She was the face of a brand, a role model for girls across the land. She sparked a revolution of body positivity in a time where slim was the only way to be. And just like her revolution against segregation, the revolution of body positivity was portrayed through upbeat songs, glittery dresses, and complete genuineness. Hairspray also made a good use of individuality in order to induce revolution. Traits like race, body type, family format, dance style are celebrated. Hairspray showed us the joy in embracing how you were created. A very good example is Anna, who finally accepts her femininity in the song Welcome to the 60s. So as you can see, Hairspray shows us that self-love and self-acceptance can be powerful forces for creating societal discourses of equality and positivity. Okay, now one other very important thing that this musical did was use pop culture to perpetuate revolution. A key aspect of Hairspray was the Corny Collins show and the teenage display of popularity and glow. Those kids are at the top of the trend and popular movements. Whatever happens, there will end up influencing all about some more. So when Tracy starts speaking up in support of integrating the show, the message gets out, you know? Plus, her being someone who doesn't fit the idealized body benchmark, but who still made it, really changed the public opinion. So this use of pop culture and trends to sway the public season ignite revolutions, it's a huge part of hairspray and is also present in our society today. Nowadays, social media has become a huge force for creating change. An example of this is influencers who use their platform, their range, to speak up for important issues. For example, the genocide that's currently facing Palestine. Okay. And another thing to consider was presently and in the music post, pop culture's also been integral in the increase of body positivity and the normalization of different types of femininity. And on top of that, similarities can also be seen between the segregation in Hairspray and the racial injustices we see today. Black people and racial minorities are still suffering from inequality. We see cases of police brutality. Racialized groups are always disproportionately affected by issues like poverty. But just like in Hairspray, these issues get a say. There's activism and protest to fight for those who are oppressed. It's not the same as in the musical, but the revolution is there, you know. So, what can we draw from all of this? Hairspray uses bright, upbeat songs to portray real serious issues. Racism, body image, and this course shows how revolutions can be created by a single person or by cultural trend. And even though Hairspray was made a hot minute ago, the way it portrays revolution is timeless and will still apply even 50 years after this. Wow. Okay, so now that we've gone over both musicals, let's put them together, you know? Okay. Whew, here we go. So Hamilton tells us the story of a revolution by following a character's evolution. And so does Hairspray. And they both portray the revolution against racism. But Hamilton has a bigger emphasis on America against independence. And it has a very historical context. Now on the other hand, Hairspray has an emphasis on individuality and acceptance of everybody. And it's much more comparable to the present day. But in the end, both musical shores from the change in independence that we still see today. And that, my friends, is Revolution and Hamilton and Hairspray. All right, we'll be signing off. Mic drop!